So why are we having you do these observations at Vintage Elementary? The instructors of Physical Science 170 have been talking about this, and we decided that one of our big goals is not just to teach you science content. It's really to help get you excited about inspiring your students to be curious explorers of the world around them. And curiosity is going to help them learn better. And the research definitely supports that statement. So how can we inspire this curiosity? What tools do we have? And it turns out that curiosity is very closely direct, uh, related to question asking. Of course, you know that students ask questions when they're curious about things. But it turns out that when teachers ask really good questions in their classroom, they set up a climate that allows their students to actually explore more boldly and be more curious. So this is a two-way street, this relationship between curiosity and questions. And so we really are focusing a lot on questions during this class. As you get to Vintage Elementary, you're going to be a we're going to ask you to watch the questions that are being asked by the teachers and by the students. And there are, what we want you to discover is that not all questions are created equal. There are what are called higher order questions, and uh, the standards that are coming out from both the next generation science standards uh, and the Common Core uh, are really pushing us to ask higher questions, higher order questions of our students. These are ones that really require students to analyze and synthesize and evaluate information. And so what does an example of that look like? Well, here is a question. It's a question asked by the teacher. What color is the sky? And what does the student answer? It's kind of a boring question, so they say blue. Well, that teacher was trying to inspire curiosity about why is it blue. But they asked kind of too simple a question, so they have to ask a follow-up. Why is it blue? Well, some students have learned some things. They've got some ideas. Well, the ocean. Well, here's a student that's taken a physical science class. Oh, it's the refraction of light. And the, student, uh, the teacher then says, yes, OK, good. We've got the correct answer. Let's move on to the next topic. This is not an example of a series of really good higher order questions. Let's take a look at how we can spin that around to a higher order question. So here we are. We all say the sky is blue. So let's look out our window right now. Nina, can you describe the colors you see? It looks blue. Is it the same shade of blue everywhere? And so now you should be looking at this video here a little bit closely and seeing what you see. Actually, no. It looks more white near the ground and more dark blue up high. Hey, why is that? Good question. Let's try to figure it out together. So here, by setting up the right type of question and the right environment and the right follow-up questions, this teacher was able to get the students to start asking the questions and driving the curiosity. And that's our goal. And it requires a careful attention to looking at questions and trying to decide which questions are good, which questions are promoting curiosity, and which questions aren't. And in case you're curious about this picture, this is uh, go ahead and do a Google image search for blue sky. And just take a look at all the images. And a good portion of them, you will see that it is, in fact, not all blue, the same shade of blue everywhere. And that gives a huge clue to why the sky is blue that you might actually be interested in learning about. So, so that's, that's for another time. But let's figure out how you're going to do your observations in your class. Well, look at that. One of the instructors or, and, uh, and or student assistants from Physical Science 170 has sent me an email uh, the night before my observations with a few details about things. And it includes some information about where I need to go and when I should be going, what I need to bring. And it has a link in it here uh, to the observation submission. Now, you can also find this directly in Moodle uh, under the item that says submit your observations here. But let's go ahead and see what happens when we click on it. So the first place that takes us is a Moodle login. We'll type our username and password. And it should automatically take us to a screen that looks like this. You should see your name up there to prove that you're logged in. And we are ready to start a new classroom observation session. We're just about ready to start seeing this teacher teach. So let's set that up. There's a box right up here at the top that says type the teacher name or room number here. This is room 23, grade 5. Uh, the observation is going to be today. And this class starts at... Uh, 9.50. And I can go ahead and submit that. 
and you can see up in the upper right in red new observation is created so uh, I heard a question it was what color is the sky that was a question asked by the teacher remember you're trying to record every single question that's asked by either teachers or students and a quick note about the response uh, that was uh, blue which is a direct answer to the question now since I'm doing this observation in real time with my phone uh, I want this observation to, to be recorded right now at this moment and so I don't have to do anything except hit submit so I'll submit that I'm ready to ask my next question or hear my next question uh, the next question is why is the sky blue also asked by the teacher um, and people said ocean reflections I had a little bit of a discussion about that and I want that to record right now and I want to check and see is that working for me uh, you should see it says observation is posted right there in that upper right corner that fades away but if I want to check and make sure I can quit back to the menu and click view previous observations oh here's my room 23 grade 5 it's got this funny number right here that's where I'm gonna click on that link and it will show us our two observations you can click on each one of these little uh, question marks and see the, the questions that we've written. We've recorded for a total of 0.4 minutes and had two questions. That adds up to quite a few questions per minute. And when I'm ready to add more observations to this session, I just click right here and it will take me back to the screen I was at. Now, let's say that everything fails on you and your network goes down on your phone and you need to use the paper and pencil version. Not a problem. You can follow the same procedure and log in a little bit later and type in a new question uh, tell me what colors you see in the sky outside or can you tell me I guess that was asked by the teacher and prompted a discussion but now instead of recording this right now I, I, I was keeping track on my watch and I saw that that question was asked at 952 and so I can just go ahead and hit submit and this is important because what we're going to try and do is when you actually go ahead and reflect on your questions you're going to see this little graphical plot that shows how often how often questions are happening and we might see differences between different teachers so the timing is important so please go ahead and record either in real time using your phone or with a piece of paper and pencil where you're writing down those times and then you enter the time in correctly later so you can keep doing that until you finish the first teacher's lesson. Remember, you're sticking around for to watch two different teachers teach the same lesson and recording every question that teachers and students ask in there. When you get to the end of the first teacher, you're ready to observe a new class period. You can either quit back to the menu or click the observe a new menu, observe a new classroom, which is you're ready to set up a new observation. This here is now last one was room 23. This is room 24 also from grade 5 and this class starts at 10 o'clock and I can go ahead and get ready for that observation right there and here we are my new observation set was created and I am now ready to take observations for that second session when I'm all done with this uh, if, if I can go back to Moodle and sometimes it gives me this little error right here no worries I'll just hit the home button and manually go back to the class that we've got here and on here I now have one week to go ahead and post my observation reflection reflecting on the experience and trying to make sense of what I saw and what the questions were like and what things I would change about the way that I would answer the questions so remember a key point here is that questions are one of your tools as a teacher for inviting curiosity and we want to focus in on those questions in the observations it'll also give you a chance of course to to visit the classroom that you're going to be doing these small lessons that you're going to be teaching throughout the course of the semester so uh, enjoy have fun uh, watch all those great things that the kids are asking and let us know about them